Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Dodgeball Podcast. Happy to be covering the Elite East Round 2 tournament that took place the weekend of May 5th, and here to help me do so is Frankie Gianetto, Amanda Natalie, Tim Wells, and Justin Bosch. Guys, thank you so much for coming back. I had a great time with the uh, Round 1 recap. You guys came in clutch, super helpful, and uh, apparently I didn't scare you guys away, so thank you uh, for coming back. Um, there's a lot to cover, so let's just go ahead and get into the uh, introductions. Frankie, uh, why don't you go ahead and start? Sure. Hey everyone, I'm Frankie Gianetto. I play on Team Awesome on the East Coast, and I also play on Night Shift for Coed. And I think the building we played in is cursed, and we'll get into that later. Awesome. <laughs> uh, my name is Amanda Natalie. I am a captain or coach of KO Dodgeball, and also number one fan of Night Shift Brewery or Night Shift Dodgeball, sponsored by Night Shift Brewery. Oh, nice tie-in. And Tim? Sorry. Uh, so uh, Tim Wells, Elite East Coast Rep. Uh, I play Open, No Sting, and Pinch with the uh, Rochester Tigers. Sorry. I still forget that sometimes. Um, yeah, I used to be a captain. Don't really know my role now, but you know. <laughs> and you also help organize this whole thing, right? So you're kind of a big deal. Of course. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and last but not least, um, and new to this panel, uh, Justin? I'm Justin Bosch. I play on GOAT. We are out of New York City. I play open and co-ed. Awesome. All right, so uh, guys, let's go ahead and just right out the gate, discuss some of the difference between uh, this round and round one. Tim, why don't you go ahead and begin with um, the biggest difference. I, I want to say like the incorporation of pinch, but that's just from my perspective. Would you say that was the biggest difference for round <clears throat> two so far? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of that. I, I dropped kind of an Easter egg in the last... Uh, chat that we had here i was like don't be surprised if there's a day two but uh yeah i mean i guess don't be surprised if there's a day two round three either so uh <laughs> um yeah i mean it's i guess the venue's not my absolute favorite but um i think that the biggest difference was honestly having mark there uh, i felt like the day went by pretty smooth and um it's like interesting because i played in the north for round one and it was like wow i don't have to like run a tournament this is amazing and then it was kind of like that over the weekend and that's i think we played a lot better because of it but that's just me so that was my biggest difference that i noticed gotcha and then kind of want to go through the line uh justin did you play pinch no we didn't play pinch we just went down for the day so we drove down saturday morning and drove back saturday night which is a long day yeah i'll bet so we'll come back to you for for, for open in that case and then uh frankie did you play both I did not. We had stuff to do on Sunday, so just Tim. It was just me. Oh, wow. So all this <laughs> just for you, Tim. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I Sorry, obviously didn't play either, but um, I know some of the guys on Night Shift were disappointed because we had already booked our flights at the point we found out about Pinch. So I think there will be more teams in the future if it's announced when the rest of the divisions are announced, but because it kind of came later in after all that had been the dates had been set and whatnot. I think some people just logistically couldn't make it work. Yeah, no, I get that. And so, um, again, we didn't announce it right when we put up the event page. Um, but I talked to a lot of teams that were there today, or I'm sorry, over the weekend. And, um, you know, a lot of other people were like, yeah, you know, with a little bit more advanced notice, we can definitely make it. So I think I talked to Goat. I don't know, Justin, did I talk to you? Yeah, we talked about uh, it. Yeah, and you guys are only like an hour or so away. So we should definitely Yeah, we talked about pinch. definitely doing at least in New York City pinch team right it's pretty Between great one of the, so five yeah teams. exactly so i mean um you know i'm not trying to resurrect pinch but like there's been a lot of people that have wanted it uh because it used to be pretty much a staple you know for years like one and two but then um not that it's a curse or anything but having more females start to come out you know definitely shifts the priority for elite so it's nice to see you know the the option to pinch again so Gotcha. And Amanda, I see you kind of nodding. Do you think Tim's <laughs> resurrecting Pinch? or? No, I, um, I'm i glad to see it back. I know the East Coast has been asking for it for a while. There's even been some in some of the women's groups that we have asking for like a women's East Coast Pinch team or division or whatever. I don't know if there's enough interest for that, but I think Kim Wilkie, it sounded like maybe played with her Pinch team. Tim, no? So she was there. I'm not entirely sure if she played. She definitely refed and definitely props to her for that. Um, yeah, no, I think 
if she did and I don't and I didn't see her, then I'm sorry, but I don't I don't think she played. So. Okay. Yeah, I mean there's definitely interest in it, I think, from some from some women. Um so I'm sure I'm wouldn't be surprised to see a few of them playing in it um at round three if it's announced with the rest of the divisions. Gotcha. So it's yeah. probably something that'll be if it happens for round three, there'll be more teams then, more preparation, more more people coming down. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. I think it'd be good also just, I think most people are terrified of it. So just to get people into playing it and not get so scared of it, I think would be good. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not afraid of me. I'm, I'm terrified of pinch. I've, uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, real, I mean, we'll go, we'll definitely go into pinch later. But um, yeah, I, I got started playing pinch and then just over the course of time stopped and then pinch just became this scary terrifying i'm gonna break every finger in my hand um just don't want to do it but uh yeah i saw you point to yourself amanda and i'm with you there yeah my first memory of pinch was from the rochester invitational and (laughs) our team was down um a player so i stepped in to help them and i think we were playing task force and immediately all all five guys were out (laughs) on our team and it was just me and i literally like put my hands in the air and walked over the line because i was like I'm sorry, but I'm not about to take balls from all six of you. <laughs> sorry, guys, we're going to lose. This Just one. like, how about now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, well, well, we'll get into pinch later. Um, definitely want to to find out what, what took place. But I do want to, I guess, backtrack and just kind of compare round one versus round two and just get a sense of like the overall difference, other than the fact that you had a pinch division. Um, and Frankie, you can take lead, or you can start with this question. Um, what differences did you notice just off the bat? Sure. So last time on the podcast, I talked a bit about bubble teams and teams that like always want to crack top four and can't quite do it. And uh, this was the bubble team round. All of the teams that were right there kicked butt to you know, censor that language there. And um, thank you, by the way, it was a really, yeah, I got you. It was just a, honestly, it felt like a upheaval. Everyone from the top four from round one, besides brick squad lost pretty early. I think Z warriors didn't get any points. Anarchy got two awesome got four. So that left almost what, like eight teams worth of points to, you know, be at the top of the game. So it was a, Interesting round for me, and uh, I think a really good round for dodgeball in general. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you you brought that up, Frankie. With the um, I almost said like the gap. You said it was like the bubble between who is going to take top four, and uh, I'm looking at um, you know Brick Squad, Goat, Clutch Mo, Team Awesome. Uh, I'm really surprised, and I really hope I don't open up a, a can of worms on this one. But I don't Anarchy. Um, they're fifth. Uh, do you want to comment on that at all, Amanda, or? Frank, you're kind of pointing yourself. Maybe you should. Yeah, so Stole um, that from Amanda. <laughs> we, we, we can go through the bracket more later, but there were a lot of early upsets. So there were teams playing each other in the losers bracket right off the bat. So Anarchy and Awesome played in like the quarterfinals of the losers bracket. So there's still like 12, 16 teams alive at that point. So it just really shook things up where Awesome and Anarchy played right away. And then Awesome and Brick Squad and like Brick Squad and Arkham. All of the good teams are just playing each other in the losers bracket. And I don't know if they're the good teams anymore. It was a pretty crazy round. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. I remember um, in our last discussion, like Frankie was saying, um, there was a lot of the bubble teams are now up in those spots. So he had mentioned clutch mode. Being not wouldn't be surprised to see him in the top four. Um, we've always expected kind of Arkham to be up there. They've always done well. Um, I seem, go, to, forget you, I seem so, to forget you guys mentioning goat that time though. Oh, sorry. Well, you proved us wrong, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, I think everyone was shocked to see anarchy go down to the um, losers bracket so quickly, but I don't think we're, I think the one team uh, don't want to jump ahead, but the one team that really stands out to me is like, doing well that I wouldn't have expected was Mount Olympus. So they were, they were more of the surprise team. Absolutely. Like to see Goat win the whole thing. It was great, but it's not super surprising. They're a great team. They've been playing together forever. So like not super, like it's surprising. I think because people might've expected Anarchy to be there, team awesome to be there, but like to see Mount Olympus in the, in the semifinals, I guess, in the winner's bracket was pretty shocking. 
and I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at round one's uh, rankings, and I don't even see Mount Olympus. So were they not not at, not at round one? No, oh, they, they were there. there. No, they were there. Oh, they were. Yeah. Oh, I see. They just didn't get points. Oops. Okay. They're a really young team. I think that the average age must be like twelve. <laughs> They're so young looking. <laughs> Gotcha. Well, I mean, they must have uh, taken notes and and uh, did their homework because they they seem to have a pretty good uh, showing for round two, and I think that's what you're you're talking about, Amanda. But uh, yeah, let's let's definitely go into goat. So um, you guys took first for open. Congrats. Uh, that pushed you up to the second ranking. Looks like. Uh, do you want to kind of just comment on that, Justin? Just kind of get yeah, your thoughts I, overall. It was. Uh, I I sort of forgotten what happened when we won because I, I feel like I blacked out in excitement. I, uh, I know we won, but I just don't really remember how we won or, or what exactly happened. Um, but like Frankie said, it was, it was an interesting day where, you know, every time we looked around, we were like, Oh, there goes Rick squad. They lost or, Oh, there goes anarchy. They lost. And suddenly we were playing all these teams and suddenly we were in the finals um, without playing any of those teams that we expected to play. I mean, we, when the bracket came out, we expected to play Anarchy to go to the fin- to the semifinals, and we ended up playing Tigers. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was very happy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, um, oh, you're saying sorry because uh, you didn't get to play Anarchy. Is that right, what happened? Exactly. Gotcha. Tigers took Anarchy out in the first round. Um, I remember our game for Arkham took a long time, and it suddenly looked over and I saw Tigers win a game. I was like, oh, they won a game. Let's go see if they're... And then I realized, oh, no, they beat them. Anarchy just lost. They're storming off the court. Yeah, so it was, a, it was an upset then. They're storming off the court. I mean, yeah. I, and again, I'm, I'm not trying to rag on Anarchy at all. Uh, it just if you, if you place first, last division, or last round, it's kind of like the expectation that's going to happen again. So if they get knocked out early, it kind of opens up the playing field for a bunch of other teams. And then, um, how was your battle against Goat since Tim's here? If you can, oh, how was your battle against uh, Tigers since Tim's here? I um, sorry, go on. No, you go ahead. Yeah, I mean, um, we a lot of how we got that far because I mean, we also had to get through Aftershock to get to Goat, and so it was Anthem, which is the Towson uh, NCDA team, and then like we almost lost to to Towson. Like it was a two to one. Um, and I don't really remember this, but apparently I won a 4v1. So like, I don't, again, so like we weren't even, we were very close to losing before even getting to Anarchy. So like it was, I wouldn't say that it was shaky. We were still trying to figure out our groove for most of round Robin. So like, it just seemed like everything clicked and we just started getting really key catches going forward. And so I just finished watching the match against code. And so, um, I saw that Kevin got a catch. Uh, against Justin that brought in Steve. And so that was what brought it so close to the end where I think it was like a 1v3 or something. Um, so, I mean, it was it was definitely nice to see the teamwork, you know, finally click. But, um, yeah, so it, it, it's great to see us, you know, start to come into our own finally. So Gotcha. And the reason why I pulled you in for that was just because, you know, you'd, you'd apologize like, oh, sorry, you don't get to play Anarchy. <laughs> you, you get to face us. And then Goats just seemed like it doesn't matter. See ya. Like they just sent you. No, we took that first round line. and we were just like, oh, well, that was a lot easier than we thought it was going to be. And then, of course, they storm back and take the next round. And it's like, all right, well, you know, it's a tie game. And so, you know, I got um, Mikey and uh, Armando pretty close off the opening rush. And then uh, I think Billy went out too, and it was like, oh, well, now they're down to just three. That's okay. That's cool. Yeah. So, like, it really was just, uh, it's hard to like replay. You know what I mean? Like, it was just every hit was connecting. Like, you know what I mean? Like, where you're just on one of those days where like every shot's connecting with something. And uh, not that you're getting all the breaks, but it's just everyone's doing what they're supposed to do. So, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, and, I watched your guys' game today. It didn't look like you guys made a mistake in that game. Again. Exactly, right? Like, literally, and that was the thing is, like, I got out, like, really, really close, like, very early on each one. And, uh, you know, I think that it's really, really important to coach people when they're in a high-pressure moment like that. And so whether it was me yelling, like, hey, like, don't throw a single, or, hey, you should really, like, pick your target, or, 
you know, when you throw at that guy, have someone follow up afterwards kind of thing. Just like giving pointers so that they can be aware that, you know, there's a, a better way to, to make a play, you know? So I don't know. Hmm. So it looks like, um, and sorry, Frankie, but you guys, I don't want to say you guys got knocked out early, kind of towards the middle of the loser's bracket against a uh, brick squad. Mm-hmm. You want to comment on that at all? I mean, you said the the building was cursed. Is that the beginning of it, or was that? <laughs> so here's why this building's cursed. So we played here last year for round two as well. Um, it was a very similar situation where almost the entire top four from round one had lost early. We were actually the brick squad last year. We had made it to like third place, whereas all the other top four teams had lost like really early last year. And then this year, brick squad was the one previous top four team that really stuck it out. Um, and in our match against them, they just, they handled us well. It seemed like, you know, we beat Anarchy. We're all on a high right now. Like we beat the team we had to beat. And then we played Brick Squad and they were really strategic and did what they wanted to do to us. Um, we had a couple, I guess, kind of like hero performances, but it wasn't enough. Like one person's not going to beat six people no matter how well they're playing. So we just went out early. Um, but I have a question for Justin. So we're talking about, you know, first in the bubble, finally placing the top four and you're winning, but um, you had another first, I believe. You finally got Arkham in the playoffs, right? How'd that feel? I think that was the first time we beat Arkham in the playoffs. Uh, I actually had talked to Arkham afterwards and it's like, we you know, they're another New York City team and it's like playing your brother or playing your sister constantly. They know everything you want to do, that you know, everything they want to do, and we just never seem to be able to beat them in the playoffs. Uh, we've beaten them in open and round robin and co-ed, but never in the playoffs. And I'm always the most nervous against playing them. Not because I think they're the greatest team. I think they're probably one of the best strategic teams. Um, But finally being able to beat them, I think actually took a weight off all of our shoulders and allowed us to play a little more loose um, going forward. So, you know, going next, then get Tigers and Clutch Mode, and then finally Brick Squad in the finals, all sort of felt downhill after beating Arkham. And you said it was because they, they, they're like your brothers. Uh, is it just because they, they get in your head and they, they just know you guys so well that it's always a, a tough match? or It's always a tough match. They place their, I mean, I guess you guys probably could say the same thing. They're the s- slowest playing team uh, by choice. They, they're just very calculated and deliberate, and they know how to play us. And we, you know, we play with them every week. We practice with them every Wednesday night, um, along with the other New York City teams. And so they know everything we want to do. And finally, we were able to just take them out, which was great. You know, we made some clutch catches um, and our teamwork. We just, every single person we wanted to get out, we got out. Um, and I don't think they made a catch against us in the three games that we played. Um, but it was a tense, tense match, as it always is against Arkham. Nice. And without being um, disrespectful or anything to the other teams, um, what what team was the hardest battle for you guys for this whole bracket? Would, would it have been Arkham? Uh, yeah, I think Arkham probably would have been the hardest bra- hardest team we played in, you know, in the playoffs. Um, we beat everyone two zero except for Brick Squad and Arkham. Um, but you know, when we played Brick Squad, we had the buffer of the you know coming out of the winners bracket because it wasn't as nerve wracking playing that third game because you know you have one more round if you need to. They have um, that you can kind of spare it if you if you if you must exactly. Um, and against Brick Squad in the end, we got ahead pretty quickly um, in that third game, so it, it didn't feel as close. Whereas Arkham just is always always tough. I mean, we lost to them last weekend in a Philadelphia tournament in uh, in playoffs as well. What did you guys do differently? Uh, be, I mean, not only just against Arkham this time around, especially after a week turnaround time frame, but even from uh, round one. Uh, I would say our our teamwork was on point all day. I don't think we made one. I can't think of one really bad throw that anyone made. There was never a, a single throw. It was always team throws. We really started playing a little more protective towards the end. Some of us, especially me and and Lewis, will sometimes go for hero catches a little too much <laughs> instead of sort of dodging and blocking. And we just didn't do that that at all that during the day. We, we were playing within ourselves and 
you know, Tim asked me who was our team MVP. And I was like, I don't really, I can't pick one person. I, our whole team played well the entire day. And there wasn't one person who played bad. Dre, who's our big arm, also made, I think he made like eight or nine catches in open, which is a lot of catches, uh, which he doesn't always do, um, <laughs> which also makes a huge difference. As well. He is a big target. But if he's catching, it's hard to get him out. He's a huge dude. <laughs> That's awesome. So, I mean, it just sounds like you guys were on, you guys were firing on all cylinders. You guys had this energy. And, and once you got that, um, for lack of better words, that monkey off your back of Arkham, you guys are just like, all right, we're, we're solid. We're just going to make it the rest of the way. Uh, for me, definitely it felt that way. Once they were, once they were in a review mirror, I felt much better about ourselves. Um, I mean, they could have easily come out of the, the win, the loser's bracket, but gotcha. I, you know, it's just a different feeling once you get past them. Yeah, I, w- I wanted to kind of go back to what I said about when you see anarchy st- stomping off. Th- there's definitely like a psychological pressure that certain teams have on you. And if you see them already making their exit, you're like, oh, thank God, I don't have to worry about Doom again. Well, that never happens. But, you know, <laughs> just from a West perspective, you know, once once that some of those teams get knocked off and you're still in, you're like, oh, okay, cool. I don't have to worry about them so much. And that, I don't know, that it, it's hard to measure, but I know for a fact that that definitely uh, impacts your team in, in a positive way or your outlook or your mentality. So, um, I'm not saying that's what happened with, uh, with Arkham. Um, obviously they still were in it. Like you said, you just, uh, you know, maybe another team is going to take care of them and you guys can just focus on what light ahead of you. So, yeah, I mean, our goal all day was just like, let's look at this one, one game at a time, one game at a time. Uh, one of our teammates kept being like, well, if we win this, we're top three guaranteed. And we kept being like, no, no, no. We're only one game ahead, one nice. game ahead. And, uh, I think that mentality really helped us throughout the day. It's definitely a good mentality to have. And real quick, uh, just for my own personal um, knowledge, uh, goat. What, what's the what's the origin behind that? Uh, was it greatest so of all started, time, or? I mean, that's basically what it was. Got it. Uh, when we started our team last year, we came up with like seventy five names, and uh, we made a spreadsheet, and everyone just ranked them in order, and that was the team. That was what ended up winning in the long run. Um, I think second place was Donkey Punch. So. <laughs> All right, well, uh, glad you guys stuck with goat. <laughs> exactly, I'm sure. I'm sure Tim and Mark would be happy with that. As yeah. well. We may not have let you do that. <laughs> yeah, that would have wouldn't have lasted very long. My four year old son was a big fan of that. Oh boy. <laughs> um, and obviously, uh, no relation to goat tape, right? Sorry, I, I just... no. We hadn't used goat tape at the time. I think I don't think goat tape was. No one was even using it until the beginning of last year, and we had started our team before that. Gotcha. I've always wondered, just like, eh, I mean, it's kind of too perfect. You never know. Just thought I'd ask. Yeah, I feel like we should try to get a sponsorship, like uh, Precision. I mean, Precision you already is sponsored by GoTape. Should definitely leverage that first place win. I mean, you guys are ranked what second now? So, I mean, exactly. exposure is exposure. Um, well, real quick, I kind of wanted to go back to to Amanda and just kind of see overall what what I mean. Did you get a chance to witness um, the 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 championship uh, match or? That's pretty much all I was able to see because it was overlapping with the women's. But I right. do remember um, watching when Goat was playing Brick Squad, and um, I know Justin was saying he was he didn't quite remember all the plays that happened at the end. But I think both games against Brick Squad came down to Nar left over, and Nar played really well. There were quite a few times where I thought Nar's going to bring back Brick Squad because it would be like Nar versus two, three of the Goat players. Um, and usually it would come down to a one-on-one and um, Goat took it, but Nar played better than I've seen him play in a very, I mean, he, I haven't seen him play very often. He's been kind of floating around on different teams, but um, he played really well. And and who is this again? Nar? Narciss Narciss Clarkson. Clarkson. Narciss Clark, uh, Clarkson. Yes. I don't know how I keep butchering simple names. I'm sorry, but. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's a simple name. An interesting first name. Narcissist. Yes. Very unique. That's a cool name. Um, yeah. He was in uh he was in the one like two years ago or three years ago. Yeah, he made it to the I think in New Orleans maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. no, Katarina was New Orleans. The year oh, before. So maybe it was the year before, the year before that, that. Las Vegas. Uh, the second yeah. year of Vegas, yeah. He used to play on Team Awesome and now he's playing on Brick Squad. Did he play with GOAT at some tournament too? He's played with Goat on. Uh, he played on Goat with us at a Kyle Roth tournament, okay. which we ended up winning, and uh, maybe a couple other ones. 
He plays with the Tigers on nine, those thing. Yeah, so he, I think he's trying to find where he fits well, and it seemed like he did well with Brick Squad today hmm. or this past weekend. Awesome. Cool. Well, let's. Uh, sorry, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I really like the comparison, um, especially because this is the first one. You know, we're, we're still waiting for round two um, in the West and in the South and in the North. So I did want to ask, and uh, we'll start with you, Frankie. Um, were there any other upsets or any other teams that just came back like with a vengeance? Um, you know, like in Goats uh, instance, I mean, they just came back swinging and out, were a different team from round one that you noticed? Well, I guess the other team we haven't given a lot of airtime to yet is Clutch Mode. Um, they were, you know, on the bubble about, f- I think they tied for fifth last time and they made it as far as third this time. They, uh, they've been all over Facebook about beating us. So good, good for them. We'll be coming back for round three, but um, they were playing really well. Uh, I think we're going to do player spotlights later, but they added a big arm and it really helped them. So I think that's probably the only team we haven't given a lot of time to that took the leap forward from one, round one to round two. Gotcha. And uh, how about you, Manu? Did you get to see any or, or were you mostly focused on, on the women's division? Yeah, I didn't get to see a ton of the Open, unfortunately. No worries. Um, and uh, Tim, how about you? I mean, we already said Olympus and they were in our pool and we didn't even get a chance to play them. But um, I don't know, because I mean, I'm looking at the the scores now and so Z Warriors didn't really make it as far as I was thinking that they were going to make it. Um, and I guess to, to throw the spotlight back on uh, Justin, I thought that for a while they were going to be going against Arkham as well. So uh, <laughs> like it was surprising to to see not really who played well, but who, like, I guess how the playoff bracket evolved over time. And so, again, like, none of the top four teams really making it uh, to, like, the third round of of the winner's bracket um, was really, um, like, I thought that we were the only upset, but apparently there were a lot more, so. Gotcha. And then, Justin, I mean, kind of kind of talked about a little bit, but did you notice any other, aside from Arkham, um, I think I might have I already re- asked that. I but. was really impressed with Anthem. I mean, I didn't. I saw they lost to Tigers, but when we played them in round robin, they're a young team from Townsend, and I was really impressed by them. Considering I know they didn't place well, but just in general, they I thought they actually gave us one of our hardest games all day. Huh. Um, and this, I think, is their first time ever in an elite tournament. So I think that those kids have a a bright future as well. Well, they. Uh, I mean, they got points, so they they ranked somewhere. Um, and you said it was Anthem. They lost. They lost in the first round to Tigers, and then must have battled up to points out of the losers bracket. Yeah, they lost to Aftershock uh, in the losers bracket. So. Gotcha. So this is, I guess, you faced them during uh, round robin. Yeah, we faced them in round robin. I just thought they were really good young kids. Nice. They're, you know, they're an NCA, NCDA team, so they they really could catch. I mean, I know one kid caught a ball of his face from Dre, which is a big arm. I'll have to take a, take a look at this Dre character. Uh, so <laughs> big, big dude catches, also has a big arm, apparently. He's well, uh, our big arm, I guess. Gotcha. Frankie yeah, would argue he's not a big arm in, in, in co-ed. He's not a big arm in co-ed. <laughs> um, I think there's one other team we left out that had a, a personal record. Uh, we didn't say anything about Space Cadets, but I think this is the first time they've gotten points, and this is their second full season of elite so i know they're pretty happy about that and they'll give me crap if i don't give them a quick call out so nice basically that's good job on making progress that's always good um well cool well, let's go ahead and just uh, kind of break down any highlight plays or players uh that each of you guys may have noticed um and we'll just start with you frankie in addition to uh space cadets um i think you already kind of um, mentioned that there might be somebody you wanted to notice or give notice to yeah, so I had two, and we've hinted at both, so mine won't be as long. But um, So Narciss Clarkson on Brick Squad, he uh, almost every game I watched them, whenever they were losing, he was the last one left. He knocked us out. It was him one-on-one with Sam Jones, and he beat Sam. And then against Goat, he, I think he was in a four against one, the game you wound up beating them, and he took it to a two-on-one before he got out, so... He just played really well all day, um, wasn't making mistakes, was just playing really good, clean, disciplined dodgeball, and I know their team appreciates that. 
And then the other one I wanted to mention was Tyler. I think his last name is Alcantara. Alcantara, um, yeah. Yeah, on clutch mode. Um, he played in the middle for them, just a big dude, just chucking balls at catchers and hitting them all day. He was just putting in perfect spots, like hitting everyone on like the shoulders and the toes. So I think um, them having that extra arm in the middle was nice. And uh, if you go back and watch our video against them, he destroys me in the one game. It's me so good in the chest. It was so frustrating. Yeah, those, those are those are bad. Yeah. Um, so no specific plays, but those two players really stood out to me. So. Gotcha. And Amanda, same same thing with you. Probably you're just too busy watching women's. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, ask Tim. How about you? What'd you notice, uh, player or, uh, or play wise? Before we get into so time? from. I guess in open, uh, the one that I, I thought played really, really well was from Anthem, um, a kid named Jordan Watt, who, um, at least in pinch, and this is how I know most of the Talison guys, um, throws like an absolute cannon. But um, in open, he was just catching everything. Like I, I remember this one play. I don't know if it was against us. It probably was. But like he was falling out of bounds and caught a ball like on his face and then just like fell out of bounds. And it it – uh, counted as like a momentum catch and it was just like crazy how he went for like the catch even though it just like literally took him out of the game and so um i don't know I, I, that kind of stuck with me um watching um um the other giovinko on brick squad uh jeff played really really well and um like it wasn't even close with us. Like we went two to one against Goat, but like when we got the Brick Squad, it was just like a straight. Like we were out, and it was a very very quick game. And uh, I mean, Narcy's played really really well in uh, No Sting and Pinch, but um, but Jeff was on another level that day too. So, gotcha. Yeah, I was gonna mention Jeff that there's a play going around where where Jeff dodges a ball with like a push up. I don't even understand how he did it. It's like he somehow does a push up and lifts himself like seven feet in the air and dodges a ball. Uh, yeah. It's pretty ridiculous. By Adam on Space Cadets. It's I, I don't understand how that kid moves. He, uh, he stole he stole that from Drew. I was to say the other yeah. geos have been doing that for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Explode from their chest the off the play, ground. <laughs> the other players, I mean, they didn't do well, like we said in uh, in Anarchy, but uh, Mikey Mikey is a the most ridiculous dodgeball player I feel like I've played ever. I feel like he's basically a built in a lab to play dodgeball. He, uh, he caught a ball from one of our players from about six inches away, falling backwards, and then dodged the next ball. Uh, he is a ridiculous player. and I had to play against him on the left corner all day, and I, I basically begged him yesterday to, to move to right corner so I don't have to play him anymore. <laughs> this, is, this is Mike McGee. Yeah. You guys call him Mikey? Well, he's like 14. Well, it's, he's like 18. He's like 19. Because they've always had a lot of mics on their team. Um, so to kind of differentiate between Caterino and him, um, it's helpful. Plus the fact that he's like 16, really. I mean, that works for me. I think he's technically 18 now. He's 19. Oh I, I want it on record that no one no one calls him Mikey. No, yeah, I've actually never called him that either. Or Katarina <laughs> Big Mike. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go by Mikey. Might have yes. to edit that out then. It'll just be like a bleep. You just hear beep, Mikey, and then <laughs> <laughs> just let him worry about it for the rest of his life. We'll never tell him. He's really honest too. Like he's a really good for him, honestly. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and go into coed now. Oh, actually, real quick. Yes. Um, this might be a, a question for Tim, but uh, I, I couldn't help but notice um, Open had 20 teams and our last or round one did, and there's 23. Were, were there any new teams that showed up? Yeah, so, um, well, Anthem was one. Right. Uh, Grizzlies was another um, NCDA team. Mostly the VCU guys um, showed up, and so they were pretty good. Um, they came to pinch, um, and they only had four guys. And they still like almost beat like half of us. So Dang. that was like pretty interesting to see. Uh, I thought it was the other one, Screaming Eagles, was I believe that was Dave Waterman's team. And so I haven't seen him around in like forever. So it was great to see him come out with a with a team. So um, I think I like drilled someone in the face on that team. But um, 
they still play pretty well. So cool. Um, actually, I know I said we're going to go into co-ed, but let's actually switch that up. Let's go ahead and go into women's. Um, Amanda, would you say that this division had its share of upsets as well? Uh, definitely. What? Um, <laughs> so, um, I think coming into the day, no one was really sure how things were going to fall. Anarchy was missing some of their key players from round one. Um, I think Precision had added a new player. I think they only had six at round one, and this time they had seven. Um, there were some new faces on other teams. So it was kind of – no one was really sure what would happen. Um, after the first round of round robin, it was pretty clear that Precision had figured things out. I had mentioned um, in the last podcast that I was surprised that they had gotten fourth because I knew that – once they had things figured out, they'd be a very good team. And um, they 2 0 to everyone in the first round of round robin because we only had six teams and we played two full round robins. Um, and so they proved right away, like, we figured it out. Um, however, I think teams then realized what needed what changes we needed to make. Um, and they ended up being tied for second place for points coming out of round robin with Anarchy and then beat them in a, like a one off to. Um, make it to get the second seed um so th to see anarchy in the third position coming into out of round robin was a little surprising too since they had been the f the one seed in round one um but then to actually get into the bracket was um a little bit a little bit crazy so um venom beat skills which wasn't a huge surprise venom's been playing really well um as well Anarchy beat Clutch Mode, not a big surprise. But although Clutch Mode has made some big improvements, they also added um, some new players. But then um, Anarchy and Precision fought it out, and Precision sent Anarchy down um, to the losers bracket. And then Skill, uh, and then Venom also, who got sent down to the losers bracket by KO, was actually able to knock out Anarchy. So Anarchy ended up in the fourth position. Um, and then Precision actually lost a game to Venom in the loser's bracket. Um, so Precision didn't just, like, easily take them out. Preci uh, Venom fought really hard for that. And then KO went into the uh, championship match pretty, like Justin had said, pretty comfortable. We knew that it would be a tough, tough matchup, but um, I think we knew, like, we have, you know, another round if we need it. Um, but Precision just dominated, took the four games straight. AO oh. didn't take a single game off of them. Um, so a pretty dominating match. Is, do, uh, do Precision and KO play against each other often? or Only, uh, I mean, um, Precision, their teammates are kind of from all over the Northeast. Same with, um, same with KO. We have a couple Boston members. Meg Fricker is in... Pennsylvania? Yes. Yes. I, <laughs> uh, Jenny Hodge is in uh, New, York. New York and Nicole Napoli is also in Philly. So we we only get to play together at, um, at elite tournaments, and I'm pretty sure the same is true for Precision. I mean, I was actually talking to someone else about it, and KO has had, like, at least the basis of five of us together for the last couple of years. So we've played together for a while. Um, we don't get to practice together, but we've played together and kind of know each other's playing styles. But we have added a couple new faces over the last couple of years. Gotcha. No, I wonder what I wonder what they did differently because I was looking at um, what's eventually going to be the the article from the Tribune, and they're saying that um, you know it was like an underwhelming performance during round one, kind of a harsh choice of words there, but they obviously made up for it by you know. Um, no offense, taking you guys out twice to 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 win the championship, um, and it looks like whatever Venom did um, must have been working because they took third again. So it's not like they yeah. had a like a bad showing. Um, they they seem were the actually I should probably ask you were, did they seem consistent from how they looked uh, during round one? Venom, right? Venom. I thought Venom looked better. Um, I felt like round one it seemed like more like one or two players were doing most of the work. And then this round, it felt like they, they like figured out 
how to include everyone. It felt like the, like the plays were more people were involved. Um, so I definitely think that Venom, I think every team improved from round one to round two. Nice. Venom's a team from New York and they actually practice with us Wednesday nights. Um, so I know they've been practicing and working on stuff as well. And uh, that team's run pretty well by Ashley. Um, who's in charge of that team. Gotcha. Is she, that. is she a new addition or is she with that team from the beginning? So she's a West coast player. She just moved to New York, uh, this right after nationals. Yep. I play um, with her in Phoenix. Yeah. So I think she had venom as a team out there, but she sort of, uh, built the team here. Um, Giselle Fernandez, who was, uh, one of the women on our team as well. She brought her in and I think she brought Beverly Rivas from the West coast. And then oh, wow. she's picked up a bunch of other girls from New York City and built the team basically on the fly in the last like three or four months. She's gotcha. a girl from Philly too, Justine. I uh, don't see her name on here by any chance. Just if we can help you out with the last name. But, um, Kennedy, I think. Frankie, what's Justine's last name? Justine is, Kennedy. yeah, Kennedy. Yep. Kennedy. Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, Ashley Rivera, I believe she started in Phoenix, at least that's when I first noticed her, and then she moved on to LA, and now she's in New York, so it was kind of cool seeing how, um, seeing her end up in, in on the East Coast now and, and repping Venom. Um, yeah, it looks like she, uh, well, at least she's, she's credited with helping the team finish strongly. Um, would you think that's fair to say, Justin? Yeah, definitely. I mean, she runs that team, and she calls all the plays, she in charge of all their practices and, and doing all the training and all the different things that they've been doing. So yeah, I would definitely credit her with any improvement that that team's making and going forward. Awesome. Um, and Tim, I mean, imagine you're, you're pretty much busy with, with open, but did you see anything from the women's division that you can comment on? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I mean, it was in like, so how the venue was set up was that all six courts were in like an inside hockey rink. And so the other two were pretty much in like a chain link fenced in basketball court. So they were, you had to like leave uh, like the actual arena and then like go like, I don't know, like 50 feet, which doesn't seem like a lot, but like, um, you know, when you're running a lot of the tournament, it, it's hard to get away for that length of time. So for sure. And we'll, we'll definitely yeah. get to that fence in, in a bit. Um, <laughs> it's going to become famous. Uh, well, let's All go right. ahead and, and ask, uh, or let me, I'll go ahead and ask um, Amanda back to the women's division. Were there any, uh, aside from what you already mentioned, any other highlight plays or players that you noticed just overall? Um, I, there weren't a lot of highlight plays. I even, I kind of was trying to watch both matches happening at once to see if I could catch any. Um, but Michelle Radley right off the bat was showing us why she's so well known um, for her catching because she like caught a ball, came up for, to grab another ball was pretty much at point blank range from someone caught their ball. And then from her knees, like took someone out and I was just like, Oh Jeez. yep, she's okay. back again. Um, so she definitely had an, another amazing round. Um, there was a new player on Anarchy that stood out to me. Her name was, I think, Holly Yu. So, Philly. What? She's from Philly, too. Oh, yeah. Um, there were multiple games where she would be the last one in <clears throat> versus three or four players and would just pick them off one by one. So she definitely um, added to Anarchy doing as well in round robin as they did. Um, without her, I don't think they would. I think there's a possibility that Venom might have finished ahead of them in points. Um, cause Holly saved quite a few games for them. Um, Jenny Hodge was on fire. Um, she, we were kind of trying out something new. Usually Emily Hotz and Kate Karen's are our corners. Um, but Kate in last week's LA classic, um, had played like right next to Emily, I guess. And it had worked well. So we put Jenny in the corner and Jenny was doing just as well, taking out opponents, pressing. Um, so she did really well. I mean, you've got to give credit to Sam Girardi and Kim Wilkie on precision. Um, 
they both were the corners for those teams and constantly had whoever they were playing nervous. And Kim must have pulled off more like how did she make those catches than I've seen in um, a tournament before. It was just like, oh, we're going to, you know, throw at Kim three balls and she's going to be out. And she would pull off like a catch on her shin as she was dodging. And you're like, oh, okay, that was unusual. Won't happen again. And then the next game she'd do the same thing. And you're like, okay, what happening is again. happening? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what, uh, so it looks like she got MVP of the day. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it would be hard to, to give it to someone else. I was going to ask you, like, because um, it says right here, um, MVP of the day, uh, though, was Kim Wilkie, who not only held things down from the corner, but also made multiple catches that seemed almost impossible to make. So if you're dodging and catching with your shin, that's, uh, that's a tall order. I think that's pretty yeah. difficult. Uh, any chance you remember any other, like, weird catches that she did or... I, I can't, like, remember the exact catches, but there was more... I want to say there was three or four where it was like, there's no way she's going to make that, and then she made it. Oh my gosh, and you're just it. like, well, she... Like, our team was obviously disappointed when we dropped four games in a row to them, but it's really hard to be disappointed when the team is playing so well and she's making these catches that you don't expect them to be making. It was never like someone, it's, it was never like that meme where it's like, oh, I'm going to be a hero and solo throw. She was making catches with like multiple balls coming at her. Wow. And how long, has she been playing for a while or is she fairly new or? I feel like I've met her, I met her maybe two years ago. Um, I don't remember who she played with last year. She definitely was a part of Elite last year though. Um, nice. I'm not sure what her women's team was. But she has been around. She's, um, I think, a previous softball pitcher because she's able to do kind of the windmill um, underhand throw as well as throwing overhand. Um, but she's she definitely played last year. Nice. Well, hopefully I'll see her in nationals so I can uh, put a face to the name. And same thing with uh, Michelle Radley. It's the second time I've heard of her already in these recaps. So some of these names are starting to sound familiar again, which is great. Um, Michelle is uh, a longtime Empire player. Yes, She's from New York. With Rob. Oh wow! She played with Rob, hometown Rob, forever, and she probably played on NDL tournaments. Yep. With, with Rob's team. She. Because I, I, I just think remember they did the, the WDA, didn't they? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. She goes by Shelly a lot of times, also. Hmm. But she is someone you do not want to throw at by yourself. No. She will make you look like an idiot. It's good to know, oh, in case we ever on a regular basis. Had to take that with me to nationals. Like, oh wait, nope, don't throw this person ever. Um, yeah, that's cool. She played on Empire and knows Rob. Um, actually, since we're we're on the topic, just a little bit, Justin, did you uh, did you notice anything at all from women's aside from what was already covered by chance? So I talked to uh, Ashley on our drive home, and she was telling me that Sam mm. was just killing people with balls all day. She said that her that Kim was catching everything, but Sam was really the arm that was putting everyone out. So that was the, the one thing that she had told me. And this was Sam... Girardi. Girardi. From, from uh, Precision as well. Nice. Yeah, it was... I I obviously had, like, what I saw, but being in the game and knowing, you know, kind of who you're watching out for is different. And when I asked a few different people, you know, who would you say, like, did did the best today. Kim and Sam's names just constantly were coming up together. Um, so it was hard to pick the MVP. Sam was right up there with Kim. Um, but I think the catches kind of won the day for Kim. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very cool. And then Frankie, before we move on, uh, any last thoughts or observations? From uh, no, I think we covered it pretty fully. Very cool. All right, so let's go ahead and go into uh, to co-ed. And uh, Frankie, um, we'll go ahead and start with you. Can you just kind of go ahead and comment on on how Team Awesome did? Sorry yeah, sure. So um, I don't play co with them, but they're they're really strong with no sting. You know, they're pretty good at UDC, and they tend to do well at the elite tournaments. I think they won two of them last year, and then this is the first one they won this year. They came in second at round one. Um, they went down to the losers bracket. They actually lost to Anarchy. I want to say in the winner's quarterfinals, like still eight teams left in the winner's bracket, 
So then they kind of had to fight through the loser's bracket and knock out a lot of good teams. They knocked out Clutch Mode. They knocked out Night Shift, which is a combination of some Boston players and some Team Awesome players. They knocked out Tigers, who are a force in No Sting, Precision, Brick Squad. So, And then they wound up beating Anarchy in two sets at the end. So they really uh, they went through a murderer's row of teams, and they did a good job. So I'm proud of them and happy for them. It was a hard-fought battle for sure. And then, I'm sorry, remind me, it was Night Shift. That's your co-ed team, right? Yeah, I play with um, some of the Boston guys like Stephen Decker, Colin Roddy, TJ Manning, and then the girls from KO. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably remember that next next time. So <laughs> finally get it right this time. Um, well, how did your team do? Um, thanks for covering Team Awesome, but we'll just go ahead and tell me how Night Shift did. Yeah, we did pretty well. Um, I think we went out one round earlier than we did at round one. We uh, kicked Justin's butt twice, which is nice. <laughs> we always joke about playing no sting against each other because it's a completely different game for all of us. Um, we had some good wins throughout the day. We beat Brick Squad in round robin, but in playoffs, the good team showed up and we lost to Precision and then Awesome took us out. So, Gotcha. And then, um, Justin, you want to kind of... We him? did lose to Frankie, uh, although I believe I caught his baller. Maybe it was Decker's ball. <laughs> I caught Decker. You didn't catch me. <laughs> um, but no sting is definitely not our forte. We're sort of getting new new to it. Uh, it's like a total different grip. It's a different ball, um, but it's fun. Uh, I think we lo- actually lost. Yeah, we lost to Night Shift in like the quarters of the of uh, no sting. Gotcha. And then, uh, Tim, you've been silent for a while, so I'm kind of bumping you up in the line. <laughs> How was that? No, of uh, course, no, it's fine. Um, so, I mean, I'm looking at the double elimination now. And so, um, it's funny, since my shoulder surgery, um, I feel like I don't really throw the nose things as well as I used to. Like, I don't really practice with them much anymore. Um, but we always tend to do a little bit better in nose things. So, of course, just like all I do is just feed Matt all day, and he just like guns at everyone. So, that's nice. Um, I mean, I'm looking at the the uh, playoff bracket here, and so we went through uh, Goat and then had, like, the longest game ever against Arkham uh, and then lost to Burke Squad um, and then Tigers. So, I mean, um, it's, like, it's fun to play Arkham in no sting because they usually have our numbers in 8.5, but when it gets to no sting, the tables kind of turn. So it's always, like, kind of interesting to – it's always like a payback round for us. So, um, yeah, I mean, and of course, I don't know what it was, but like Brick Squad just had our number like all day. And so and they two out us again. And that was just like, all right, well, <laughs> hopefully we'll have, you know, more luck in the loser's bracket. And of course, it's Team Awesome first. So always fun. But, you know, all in all, it was a good day. I think we placed fifth in, in both divisions. So, um, you know, for 23 teams and 20 teams, it's pretty respectable. So. Yeah, definitely. Earlier, Justin, I caught you shaking your head. Did you have a, a comment about what Tim was saying? Or it's just—it's never fun playing Arkham. They—they yeah. <laughs> they slow the pace down. They make the game like excruciatingly long, and they—they they usually beat you, or at least they—they they seem to usually beat me in playoffs. I won't say everyone, but they make this—they slow the pace down. I, I don't know any other team that sort of is like that that controls the pace the way they do. Yeah, Tim, weren't you the last one in versus Arkham for a while too? Yeah, I um, I went for a catch against Jenny, and then that was like uh, I think game two, and that was like forever. That that round literally lasted forever, um, and so I think I like got it down to her, and like I don't know. Again, I like can't throw no stings. I was like, I'm just gonna go for a catch, and uh, nope. Don't do the head. Another <laughs> universe, maybe, but not this one. Exactly. Yep. So, oh, well, it happens. But, yeah, and then we came back and, and uh, got him in the last round another 15 minutes later. So, <laughs> What's the <laughs> – Arkham has the one guy who, like, has that crazy sidearm throw. Yeah, Josh. Josh. Josh, Josh throws Josh. overarm <laughs> and sidearm. God, that guy's They're hysterical. Whole team throws sidearm. Yeah, it's annoying and open. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I I, uh, I love watching him play. I don't like playing against him because of that throw. It's it's just really hard for me to track, and it's I don't know. It just it's not. It doesn't make sense. But um, I remember playing against him in um, 
I think it was like Boston round two back in 2016 when Titan went out there and um, he was he was hysterical. Like he was just somebody that really like just stood out. But um, he's also really good. So I think he's the only person I recognize from Arkham. But um, his name is Josh, right? Yeah, Josh Chai. Good to know now. Um, let's see. And then Amanda, what did you see from from Coed? Um, I kind of followed followed Night Shift around, so a lot of what Frankie has already said um, is what I saw. But part of the reason um, Jenny stood out to me from um, wasn't just from women. She had a great a great day in no in uh, Coed too. Like Tim said, she she's definitely someone you need to be worried about when you're against her because she's got an arm and she can also um, catch. So she had a great day during co-ed. This is Jenny Hodge, you said? Yeah. yeah. Actually, okay. both the girls on Arkham crushed it. I saw um, the other girl. What is her name? Tara. Tara. Oh, my goodness. I, I was un- in disbelief watching her in the early rounds because she was just making catches left and right. And I was like, I was surprised because she wasn't, I think she wasn't going for those catches in, um, in women. She was more, relying more on her arm. Um, and then to see her pull off the, all these catches in, in Coed, I was like, girl, why were you not going for these during, op- or during women's? Cause she was just on fire. Hmm. Just kind of triggered something and she just started catching everything. Yeah. But yeah, I saw a lot of the same things with that uh, Frankie mentioned. Same teams. Um, it was kind of sad that we didn't get to play much of round robin because there was a couple teams we were looking forward to getting to play. But um, the morning just ran super long. Um, so we had to cut round robin short. I see. Was a. Uh... I meant to ask this earlier. So was was COVID another one of those situations where it was it was um, chaotic and and you know teams had come back with a vengeance or was this a little bit more of, of the norm from round one? Definitely a little bit more of the norm. I mean, the top four teams were or top three teams, the same top three teams that were the top three teams from the first co-ed, I believe. Yeah, I think precision and freeze were a little bit of a surprise. Um, did Precision play at round one in co-ed? Yeah, I think they play every division. Okay. So, like, I don't remember them at all from round one. Um, so for them to make it to the top four, they were playing really well. Um, uh, what's his face? We mentioned him in, in our first. Akil was impossible to hit. It was just, like, dodging left and right. You could put multiple balls on him and he was dodging them. And it was just like, okay, well let's stop trying to go for him. But then when you didn't go for him, he was countering you and hitting you. So (laughs) precision was doing, was having an amazing day too. Nice. Yeah. And you're right, Justin, it was a, it was the same three from, from round one. Akil is probably one of the most athletic people. I like when I watch him suicide and he literally clears the entire court. He'll hit a guy Mm -hmm. and land out of bounds on the other side of the court. Wow. It's a ref's nightmare. I basically can't do. I can get maybe <laughs> two inches past the, the line. Oh, that's when you got Amanda cracking up. <laughs> um, well, let's kind of just, I guess, uh, let's see if there's any, I mean, we kind of did name some players already, but were there any plays or any other players that weren't noticed or not noticed that weren't mentioned that were noticeable? Uh, starting with you, Frankie. Ooh, I don't know if I have anyone that really sticks out for co-ed. I know teams that we didn't really talk about freeze. Um, I think that was like a free agent team, right, Tim? Led by Jeremy Meadows and some other no, people. No, I think, I think freeze is Stu's team from okay. uh, Boston. And so uh, I know he has Taylor from Rochester. Um, I don't know. I don't really know who else that he has. Um but yeah, they've had like pretty hit and miss uh, rounds. I think they were like pretty decent at round one, and then again, he's he's one of the people that's better at no sting than than open. I would say, um, like again, I think he runs a, a no sting league uh, around the Boston area. So, um, 
you know, the game kind of turns for some people where, you know, a lot of people are better at noticing than, than uh, 8.5. So. Yeah. I'm trying to think of plays. Um, I mean, I watched Mikey like 10 times, just mow down people. Like they get like four or five balls and he just goes down the line and hits one after another. And then I remember Anarchy was playing DIY and I can't remember the name of the female player on her team, but she did awesome catch on Billy. Like another one similar to last year when Josh Ty caught Billy and then like everyone was freaking out. So it was another one of those. And uh, that goes back to that building being cursed. <laughs> but yeah. Someone caught Billy and it was awesome. Like one of the female players on DIY, just like, I think it was a pretty close range catch and he tried to rocket it at her and she caught it. So Sorry, I don't remember her name, but it was on DIY. Huh. I'm sure hopefully somebody's got a film of that and that'll surface somewhere. Um, sucks for Billy, but, you know, when you, you throw that hard and somebody catches you, it's, it's going to be a celebratory affair. So, um, Justin, I'd, I did see um, Edgar Fox and Dan O'Hara, some people from your team. Looks like they got some, some mentions here in this uh, pre article Yeah, Dan, is, uh, Dan and Edgar are both new to our team this year. Edgar played on Arkham uh, last year, and I think he actually started Ar- may have started Arkham. Um, and Dan used to play on Gotham, which is now nice. Um, but they were huge additions to our team. And Dan, I think played. Uh, we've been playing now like the last seven months together. Saturday was the best I've ever seen him play. I stopped calling him Dan. I started calling him Danimal. He made cat. I mean, he basically never makes catches. I think he had six or seven catches. Um, he caught one ball with his knees at some point. I think he had an out-of-body experience. I'm not sure it's the same person. <laughs> Basically showed up on Saturday. He may be someone else. He got new goggles. He lost his goggles uh, at one of the other gyms, and he got the most ridiculous-looking goggles. Like They were four sizes too big for his head. They may be magnifying glasses. Maybe that's why he was catching everything. It was pretty ridiculous. It's not, uh, it's not him. It's the goggles. It's got to be. It must have been the goggles. Instead of the shoes, it's the goggles. <laughs> um, let's see. Not surprised I mean, to see you. Oh, go ahead. Speaking of catches, I don't think it came in co-ed, but I just remembered it now. Uh, Chris Zielinski had a crazy game where he, I think, he m- might have made three back-to-back catches. Someone caught him in. He came in, made a catch. Someone else threw it in, made a catch. It was just, like, unbelievable. Hmm. I mean, we all know it's, He's capable of doing it, but like he just turned it on one game where they really needed it. I'm pretty sure it wasn't uh, co-ed. I'm pretty sure it was open though. Yeah, he was. He might have had his best elite tournament period. He was playing so well all day. It's a, it's unfortunate when Brick Squad knocked us out in open. He had a he had a dumb play that really finished it off. But um, <laughs> until that point, <laughs> I he feel so bad about it. Like, no, he feels bad about it. But we were in the position we were because of how well he was playing all day. Like. Chris had an amazing tournament. He needs to be mentioned. Yeah. It looks like he'll get that mention. And then um, Matt Giovinco, not surprised to see one of those guys on there. Um, Brendan Volgamuth. Yep. Um, so in open, right? he was struggling a little bit. He's coming back from a broken hand. So yes. one of his hands is like, it's his non-throwing hand, but still in open, those balls are a little bigger. So you kind of need that to block and everything. Um, but in co-ed, he was back to his old self, just winging balls at people. Nice. Broken hand, was that uh, dodgeball related or something else? He missed round one for a fancy vacation and broke his hand as well. So now he kind of almost missed round two. Thanks. <laughs> um, and, th- and this is just my bias, but I do notice uh, I've been seeing a lot of Chris uh, De Jesus a lot. So it looks like he's going to get a shout out too for co-ed. Any of you guys by chance see... What he did, or was he just being himself, really good? Or I thought, uh, it's sort of what we're talking about, Tyler being the big arm moved Chris over to the corner, where I think he's a little more comfortable. Um, also, didn't make him throw as much, and allowed him to be more of a catcher and a, a pump faker, mm-hmm. bringing him sort of more to a natural position for him. And I mean, the kid makes unbelievable catches all day long, and I'm sure we'll all see them online soon because he likes to post them. Sure, it's all of them. <laughs> um, he's a really good hands catcher. <clears throat> he's a very he doesn't good hands catcher. His body, he just goes and snatches it, which is it's pretty cool to see. That's probably why I know him from uh, just recognition 
just always seeing him on Facebook tagged as doing something. So cool. So that sounds like a, a pretty good rundown of how code went. Um, did want to go to show, uh, to showdown real quick. Um, and obviously let me ask first, uh, did you participate in that Justin? No, I didn't participate in that. And, uh, that's not Frankie? exactly my strong suit running. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> You're making a man to crack up. <laughs> Uh, obviously, Amanda didn't play uh, injury. How about you, uh, Frankie? Nope, I sit it out. I let the people who are better at it do it. All right. Well, I guess that's that's Tim. You're on the spot. How did you do, man? Um, it was kind of a letdown. <laughs> 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 um, so I mean, I lost three to one uh, to Mikey, as did uh, Chris to Jesus. Um, I mean, I had asked like a bunch of people for, I guess. Uh, how to beat Mikey and I guess maybe there isn't a way. I don't know. Um, like, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I didn't warm up enough. Like it was like way after we had lost. I don't know. Maybe it was right after Mikey. I don't know. He was angry. So that, that goes through something. You shouldn't um, have beat him. But yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. Him. He wouldn't have been so mad. Right. But you know, okay, um, like. again, I, I caught him like point blank. So um, one day I'll see that footage and be like, "Yeah, that that hurt." But uh, um, I'm trying to think. So Zaps got a buy, as did Chris, um, and then I wasn't expecting any of. I wouldn't say any of. It doesn't sound very nice. Um, I wasn't expecting Steve from our team to lose to um, Mark from Mount Olympus. Because he's usually more of a solo player, but it was a pretty decisive loss. Mm. Um, and then Mark ended up beating Joe Tetz, who uh, lost last year to Josh Ty uh, in that round two, I believe. Um, let me see who else. Uh, TJ versus Zaps was, uh, I guess, two rival old Davis players playing against each other. So, um, I, like, I thought that one was pretty interesting because Zaps is a thrower and TJ is a catcher. So, um, yeah, and I didn't catch any of the, the TJ Jefferson and uh, Tyrell Hayes. I didn't catch any of that. So uh, those are our four going forward is um, Andrew Zabala, Tyrell Hayes, Mike McGee, and Mark uh, Saraceno. Saraceno? I'm bad at, at pronouncing last names. But, yeah, so those are our four, uh, two of which are from Mount Olympus. So um, goes to show what kind of talent is there. And two from the <laughs> Right? What are the odds? We don't talk about them. <laughs> I'm kidding. But uh, yeah, so um, I, I don't, I haven't seen Marco Tyrell play consistently enough to know or make predictions. Obviously, Mikey's the favorite. Um, yeah, so, you know, we'll see round three. Cool. Well, I mean, I, I know Mike McGee and you guys said so that he's a. Uh created out of the lab so it'll be interesting to see how he does and if he actually ends up representing the the east um exactly i think if he does he'll be better better prepared this year because <laughs> he, he i don't think lived up to the hype that everyone was expecting from him at nationals last year he made a lot of silly mistakes um so i think if he makes it to nationals again this year he'll be a little more a little more ready for it a little more wiser and, and weary. Can he be wiser at 19? I don't know, but we'll find out. Yeah, we'll see <laughs> if he if he applies past lessons learned. Um, cool. Well, I think uh, I definitely want to go into pinch, and since Tim was the only uh, person that participated in that, you can uh, probably conduct that in a separate section. Um, I do want to thank you guys so much for, for your time and for helping me recap the, the events. Obviously, I feel like it went really well for round one. So happy that you guys uh, hit me up first. Um, I was legit thinking about um, how I was going to put you guys in group chat and see if you were down to do round two, and you guys <laughs> beat me to it. So that was that was sweet. Thank you, Amanda, <laughs> for doing that. I didn't do and it. It was Frankie. Well, oh, thank you guys right. both. Uh, Justin, thank you so much for for hopping on and um, kind of giving us a perspective of of goat. Congratulations on winning eight point five. And um, I don't want to say shutting up the naysayers, but I mean that's kind of what you did. So good job. Um, yeah, I look forward much. to talking to you guys for round three, and uh, we'll just leave it at that. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, unfortunately, due to uh, time constraints and uh, schedule conflicts, uh, we're actually not able to incorporate the Pence division, at least for this episode's release. Um, I might be able to connect with Tim later and add it in at a future date. But until then, I do hope that you appreciated the recap of the Elite East Round 2 um, as we have it. Um, definitely want to say uh, congratulations to GOAT uh, for winning 8.5, Precision for winning Women's, Team Awesome for winning No Sting, and Tigers for uh, for winning the uh, Pinch Division. Judging by the amount of souls that Chainlink Fence had claimed, all those uh, popped dodgeballs, it looked like a pretty crazy event, so I'm sure that it was an epic battle to, to take first, so congratulations there, Tim. Also, a uh, huge thank you again to Frankie Gianetto, Amanda Ashley, Tim Wells, and Justin Bausch for stepping up and helping me recap. Again, I was, was pretty pretty honored that you guys uh, proactively hit me up asking if we're going to do the recap again with that panel, and clearly that's, that's exactly what I'm about. So for those of you that have a regional event coming up that you would like to recap or re-recap, definitely uh, feel free to hit me up first. Um, well, I definitely have a feeling that there's going to be uh, another flurry of events coming my way, so I definitely want to be ready. Uh, with that being said, thank you again, everyone, for your support, for continuing to listen, provide your feedback, and all that good stuff. Um, have a great weekend, and we'll catch you next time. Precision for winning women's division. Team Awesome for women. 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 Where, where do you get women? Winning. <laughs>